All right, reflecting on my programming career. It's been a long five years. Five years of standards, posture issues, fixing staging and production sites and code, so much code. It's hard to imagine that it's been that long. It seemed like ages ago. Well, buddy, <laughs> I can tell you when you get to almost 15 years, you're going to be like, oh my God, that's, that's hard. But yeah, let's, uh, let's see. For starting my career as a backend Python engineer, working on healthcare websites, building full stack application with TypeScript. Oh, wow, that's, that's a pretty neat stack. I've been seeing a few things and I let myself stay along the way. Okay, so one of the ways I did advantage myself to be a yes man. Okay, let's see. Toilet, don't do that. Okay, don't be a spoiler. Don't be a yes guy. So I took any opportunity to... I could improve myself and advance my career, build my skills and keep my clients happy. I want to be known as a competent, a competent engineer. I want people to want me on the, their team. I want attention and to be recognized for my efforts no matter what. I, okay. Okay, so there's a few things here uh, we have to discuss. So first of all, there is different, there's different uh, periods in your life, there is moments in your life that you're going to be able to actually do the extra mile or you're going to want to actually look at uh, different ways to approach work and approach life. And I feel like that's uh, that's something misunderstanding here. That like a uh, that if you don't do that, you're gonna be happier. And and I don't feel like that's uh, something that is very specific. And there is no recipe for that. But I believe that uh, it, it's not to be a yes person, but to be a person who can actually uh, do the job and do the job efficiently is way better than to be a person that like oh I'm gonna be there like for twenty hours a day and actually not delivering anything. So people value effort, but people value effort that actually give results. And I don't feel like that if you want, if you are one of these persons who actually go the extra miles and work more than, than you specify on a job, uh, on a job contract, uh, be aware that like, uh, you have to understand that on, if it improves your work efficiently, then actually worth it you to be there to do this extra mile. If not, I think that's, that's something that you can not uh, do to to keep your your clients happy and uh, and even though you do the extra miles, if you work if the work that you do is shitty, you're not gonna be seen as a competent engineer. So time and effort doesn't equate a being a good engineer, and you have to you have to be aware of that. Okay, so let's see. How long as my clients were happy, I was happy, or at least that's what I told myself for years. And actually, that's well, that's the truth, man. If you don't want friction with your clients and you're happy with that, and they are happy with your code, you get more ease of time, you get more ease on your job, you get more ease to the things they want to do. Once you have less friction for clients, you have more time to think on things you wanted to do, or things you wanted to improve yourself. So, buddy, I feel like you have to, to, to pursue that. Like you want to, to make your clients happy because they're not going to be as, as complaining as needy, and they're not going to be poking you all the time that's a good that's a good thing to do let's see yikes i was becoming the person i set out not to be a workaholic programmer who only made time for work 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 a cognitive machine that only stopped to rest okay i'm gonna get back to this point because nowadays i actually work way more than i worked before and i actually put on put on more work but then i have an explanation for that and i feel like that it's something that we should should understand it. I give already a hint at on the uh, previously, but then I'm gonna go back on this. Okay, I didn't stop to think about negative impact of my alcoholic tendencies to have a mental health in family. They crave more attention from me, attention that I denied them, so I could focus on developing the skills I thought I needed for the future. I arrived for some skills and wrong some orders. Let's see which one they say. Things I didn't need. Google qualifications. Yeah, true. You don't need that. Saying yes to all the men. Yeah, you don't need that. Any influence trends. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, of, of, of course not. But rest, rest you need. You need rest. <laughs> Say Google Cloud certifications. Looking back, I feel like this wasn't the move. I was starting to earn a Google Developer certification to show companies that I knew Google Cloud. Yeah, that's, companies doesn't care about that, man. Companies just care like uh, about if you can deploy the, the your product. So either it's Google Cloud, Azure, AWS, they are very close to each other on the products that they serve. One of the things that you have to be aware of is like uh, if this company has some vendor lock-in on some of the clouds or if you want, if you can actually 
deploy your code one where it is cheaper for that company. But sometimes that is some features on Google Cloud or Azure and AWS that actually uh, makes the company attached to that cloud service and you have to know that and you have to deploy that. So that's that's it. A better use of my time would have been better understand the exact features GCC that would benefit my project exactly. I, I agree with that totally, totally with you here, buddy. At the time I was using Firebase and every project to speed up development, uh, learning more GC Cloud functions, app engine, storage, AIM, IAM. Okay, good, good, that's good. Say yes, this was my biggest mistake. I was eager to prove myself to and fearful of letting people down. Okay, I wouldn't turn someone down because it was an opportunity for me to learn and get more experience. It was easy for me to feel like this was to progress my career, but it led to sooner burnout. That sooner burnout hindered my performance and my drive to learn. It's, uh, yeah, that's that's some truth to that. I think you have to understand your boundaries and understand like where are your capacity. If you don't understand your capacity as a software engineer or what you can deliver then saying yes to everything actually you're not gonna make your clients whether you're here you're not gonna make your clients happy so if you want to make your clients happy you have to know your capacity and you have to say yes sometimes you have to say more yes than you 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 wanted to say but then that's the the thing sometimes you have to do so a bit of like a stretch on your on your work on a workload but then you know uh, i learned to say no to other people or say yes in a way that you can actually postpone to work on that project and say, look, I'm busy right now. Contact me in one month or contact me in two months. Maybe that's the best way to balance like the workload you're going to get. So yeah, saying yes to everything is not the best, not the best approach uh, nowadays. Okay. Let's see. Influencer trends. There's new technology coming out all the time. If you like, it was my responsibility to keep up the trends. Yeah. That's something that you don't do it. There's some truth to that, but I was a bit stung eye thinking I should learn everything tech bros were talking about. No, they don't. They just don't. <laughs> it's okay to try new things. Yeah, it's okay to force yourself to try new things when you should be around those who care about you. For me, no. Well, I think that he's mixing here something about like learning stuff and he, he like jeopardizing his personal life. And I feel like that's not, not the best thing to do. But at the same time, like uh, that is a lot of things. If you learn, if you are into AI specific niche, for example, I see here, for example, uh, you are doing front end or full stack development. You have to know what's going on. So like you don't need to be up on the trends, but you need to know what's coming next on the Node.js, on the React, and what is being updated. And you have to understand that sometimes something that you you actually doing going to be deprecated. Some functions, some some approach, some hooks, and you have to, to be actually updated with what we you are using. And at the same time as well, there is some frameworks that you kind of like uh, start dying and you actually need to learn a new, a new framework. So like in 2016, I was like uh, using React and then I went to another team into the company I was working on, IBM. <laughs> and I was learning Angular. And the funny part is like, who using Angular nowadays in Europe? Almost no one. And uh, and then for me, it was something that was was okay because Angular is JavaScript, TypeScript. So that's uh, that's actually you you keep yourself inside that realm, and you're not gonna lose much. But then Angular nowadays is something that actually is not much uh, requires, not much use in Europe. And for me, if I was keeping on that, I basically I wouldn't be getting job opportunities and uh, not getting the, the job that I'm working today. So that's something that you need to be aware of. It's not trying new things, but you need to understand what's going on in the market. That's something that you have to be always be aware of. So let's go to, let's see, um, the big thing. So that's, at the time I was applying the opportunities, I never saw positions that look for as well. Russ, okay. Many full stack positions that ask if I could provide value during more common technology. But you have just five years. Uh, those five years of work, how, how people not not asking for React? That's 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 weird. That's helping to get position I was in. Understand too, this having skilled employees looking for my experience. Employees were looking for full stack dev. They had a Google Cloud certification or knowledge of us. Uh, yeah, that's that's not gonna happen. They were looking for someone who knew a big three front end. Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah, it's well exactly. Yeah, it's well Redwood. I don't see much. I think that's something that 
is more like Asia, I believe. I don't remember like where the Delta is most used, but I know the view, for example, is very Asia market. And uh, if you go to work on Asia market, you're going to see view a lot and uh, East, East Europe as well, but then not not much into like uh, into like uh, Western Europe, Western Europe, US, I see just like React and or even sometimes React if you want to like be a performance madness, but then not much. So Rust is a neat uh, language, but doesn't have much use for me. Yeah, web dev. Uh, typically work for full stack apps that use TypeScript. Typically a CMS, CMS like backend, React frontend. Uh, why should I learn Rust? Well, you can learn because you want. That's not that's nothing uh, stopping you to do it. And if you want to do stuff with Rust, that's something that you, it's up to you. There's nothing. There's no barrier here that like I'll just say to you to learn or not. But I feel you should learn. <laughs> But for me, it's just okay. So for me, uh, I I'm learning Rust right now because I really wanted to go back to more, yeah, lower lower level coding. And actually, it's a good it's a good it's good for me to go back to more uh, or object oriented approach as well. And uh, I really like Rust because of that because I, I'm trying I'm actually getting my my head around again, and I'm trying to actually be between function programming and object oriented, and. Uh, it's pretty nice to keep your mind fresh. That's for me. And uh, one of the things I learned uh, since on my beginning of my career was actually uh, log programming logic. It wasn't like a, a programming language itself. And one of the things that, that allowed me to do is like to understand the logic of programming that actually I can plug and play into different programming languages. So that's why sometimes I. I like to learn new programming languages because this keeps my mind actually refresh on my approach when I start learning coding. So that's why I start learning. So, and um, I found actually it's something useful to do it with that. So you don't just learn a language just because you want to learn. But if you want, if like you're trying something, you're trying to build something and you feel like, okay, this might be something that I'm going to be using this programming language. So yeah, let's go there, learn a little bit, see if there is application for that. And then go for it, but just don't like, just don't, don't uh, try to learn just for learning, just to keep up with the trend. Yeah, that's that's true. It's not like I was being set up for infrastructure to support web apps. Okay, so don't don't use Rust. <laughs> don't don't learn Rust. I thought uh, it would give me an edge. Yeah, it doesn't. And let me stop for a moment. There's nothing wrong with learning new things. There's nothing wrong with learning Rust or anything in my on this list. My point is I was forcing myself to learn something I didn't need to learn. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's true. So pretty much I think we got the gist here. So like basically he was <laughs> he was kind of like uh, uh, trying to learn just for learning and you don't do that. Let's go that the things that helped him. That helped him. Uh, things that helped me. Uh, communication. Okay. That's good job. Skills, CSS, etc. Say no. Adoption boundaries is in learning the project to protect those boundaries. Okay, so most of you, this is a no-brainer, but I learned the hard way. Instead of communicating with my hiccups to my team, I signed to iron our bugs my way. I can't fix I can't fix anything. I'd say to myself, not gonna say that I could save my time by pair programming someone else. What happens when you can't fix something as your and your deadline is coming up? Panic. <laughs> there are some examples nowadays that I could say, yeah, there's people that I I interact nowadays that just don't do that. Yeah, but that happens happens that is a lot of people who think they are like self uh self-sustaining and then they when they see like they, they're not self-sustained they like they don't know how to ask for help and uh that's for me that's really weird but i learned as well that i should do that when i was laid off on my my first time that was laid off because i i wasn't <laughs> that's a long story but too too long didn't read i was in turn and uh, I was trying to solve things, and now I wasn't delivering things on time. So then it's like they're like, "Well, you don't communicate, you don't ask for help, and uh, you deliver things that make the team uh, always like uh, work slower." So I'm gonna let you go, and yeah, <laughs> that will happen there. <laughs> so yeah, so TypeScript, JavaScript, another no-brainer for those working web dev. Looking back, I wish I focused on TypeScript a lot sooner. Uh, that's no need, buddy. You can use TypeScript and JavaScript. You can use JS Talk and Type and JavaScript nowadays, uh, and uh, you don't need to be using TypeScript for everything. I have more experience. So we have 
more job opportunities. Most places are asking TS experience these days. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And also grow faster. If you implement TS sooner, more legacy projects will be more maintainable because code will have been more intentional in, intentional with its data flow. True. True. CSS and HTML. If you work front end, you need to know these. Well, yeah. If you learn React, you learn those. <laughs> It was decent, but for most of my career, I use this for everything. Who cares about that CEO accessibility? Anyway, yeah, totally uh, not my attitude these days. And uh, to be honest, Tailwind. Just just learn Tailwind. Uh, people saying you need to learn CSS, I don't believe so. Uh, just just go for Tailwind. I think that's pretty good for SEO as well. Say no. If you're having a hard time, it might be your skeleton key. You learn to say no and protect the boundaries. That was a game changer. When I learned how to protect, protect my boundaries, I was able to properly set Expectation with my team. Expectation that were manageable led me to get more sleep, keep work at work, generally feel less stress and not feel burned out as quickly. That's good. That's good. You have to swallow your pride to do this. Accept you can't do everything and should leverage your team when you need them. And they are there to help you as you are not them. Yeah. The good thing you do have to do, you have to do when you work in a team is actually to understand that you can split tasks with your, your fellow colleagues. And if you see something that actually you can, you can be split that do so. And, uh, it's a, the best, a best performance team is the, the team that actually knows, uh, was the best capability of each other and can distribute better the tasks for them. And when you're starting on software engineering and start working and you wanted to prove myself yourself, and uh, I think that everyone wanted to do that and everyone will be doing it next mile, and uh, they're going to be working. They're going to be working. They're going to be working a lot. And one of the things you, I, I say to you is do so, do the next mile, do the work, but you have to do this with some, some sort of management. You have to manage your workload. You have to manage your work time and know when to work and when to stop. And I, I say that because nowadays I work a lot. I work like I wake up 5 a.m. to work and I stop working like 6, 7 p.m. Sometimes I will go further, but nowadays, for example, I reduce my workload, but at the same time, I be more effective and I be more, I be more proactive and in my code was, is being delivered faster as well. And one of the things that I see is, uh, when you start doing the job, you start doing the work and start doing your workload and you, and you, when you key, you kept to a pace that you see, like you're doing a lot. You start looking backward and see what you can actually make faster and more in in the code can be more reliable because at the end of the day you don't want it to be working a lot and people can see you working all the time but then when they see your, where is your code your code is is basically crap so you don't want to do that so one of the things i do nowadays is like uh, at least what day a day a week i, I get what everything that i'm doing and the other process that I'm following and see like what can and remove from this process that actually could make my code faster. And, uh, and that's the thing I'm doing nowadays. And then it is reduced time. It reduced like time that it could be like, uh, I could be waiting for something and then now I can actually do more work there. And then I can actually leave earlier, log out earlier and then enjoy my life, enjoy my life with my fiance. And that's the things I've been doing today. So. I don't, I don't think that you as a beginner nowadays, I don't think you wanted to actually take in the step that you're going to be stopping at 5 PM to stop your work. But I believe that you, as you as you're learning at, at the moment, you are being competing with other people that are learning as you, you wanted to be ahead of the market. You want to actually be as better as fast as you can. So I think that you can. It's not hard to take that extra mile and, but then you have to take efficiently. Otherwise people are not going to see you as a good developer. Okay. So that's pretty much it. What do you guys think about it? And what do you guys think about this, uh, <laughs> these ideas and, uh, how you reflect on your own programming career? Let me know on the, on the comments down below, please subscribe. And as always, this is the PR review.